Friends, welcome to First Presbyterian Church, where faith is nurtured, curiosity encouraged, diversity welcomed, and all are loved. I am Pastor Sue Collar, and I'm so glad to be spending this time with you today. If you are watching on Facebook, please say hi in the comments. And if you are checking us out online, if you've never been with us before or have just kind of begun to figure out who we are, go to the website, fpclincoln.org, and click the I'm New tab and choose Coffee with the Pastor. If you're in town, I'll treat you. If you're not, there's always Zoom, email, text, old-fashioned phone, many ways to connect, but this is your opportunity to get to know us a little better, a little bit more informally, and gives us a chance to get to know you and see what questions you might have and what you are looking for as you visit. Today we're celebrating the Sacrament of Communion. Everyone is welcome to participate in our church. You don't have to be a member of this church. There's no age requirement. There's not even an understanding requirement. If you are looking for hope, if you are looking for guidance, strength, if you just want to be a part of a community, whatever you are seeking, you are welcome at this table. It is Christ's table. It is not ours. If you haven't already, that means you might want to go grab something to drink and something to eat, bread, juice, coffee, donut, whatever you have handy. Uh, this Bible doesn't tell us what we have to use. Jesus used what was common in his day. Use whatever is common in your house. God is present no matter what. There are a few things coming up that you might want to take part in. Uh, if you've ever wanted to understand the book of Revelation, kind of one of the weirdest books in the Bible, if you're watching this on Sunday, tomorrow on Monday, June 6, we're starting a Zoom study of the book of Revelation. We also have an opportunity for us just to gather as, uh, as a community, just for fun. If you're into baseball, uh, we're going to be going out to the Salt Dogs game on June 26. So if you're in town, I hope you'll join us for that. And if you like music, we have a couple concerts coming up. We have on uh, Friday, June 10th, an outdoor concert with Harana and uh, free ice cream with that one. And then the Salt Creek Song Festival on Saturday, June 18th. You can find out more information on all of these events on our website. Just click the events tab and you'll find all that and more there. As we move into worship, we're going to hear the story of Pentecost. Today is the day we celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit to those very first disciples, and we celebrate the Spirit's presence with us ever since. Now, before we actually go into that reading, just a little bit of a teaser. Hang around after the worship service, so at the end of the, the worship video, hang around for a little little short story about Pentecost and fire making. So just a little bit of a teaser there. You'll have to hang around to see what that's all about. But let's center ourselves now as we prepare for worship. Hello, my name is Rick, and I serve on the online ministry team at First Presbyterian Church Lincoln. Here is a reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, 
And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. As with those early disciples at Pentecost, here at First Presbyterian, we attempt to speak in language that resonates with our members and visitors alike. Sometimes that language is beautiful and metaphorical, like a work of art. And sometimes it is comfortable and familiar, like your favorite pair of shoes. But it is always focused on helping us to connect to everyone here. Thank you for joining us today and being part of our community in whatever kind of language helps you connect with others and with God. Greetings. My name is Christy Abraham, and I am joyfully involved in First Presbyterian in several ways. First, I'm involved in Presbyterian Women, I am part of the music program here at the church, and I also serve on the committees of worship and sacrament and mission. Friends, on this, what is often called the birthday of the church, we tell an old, old story, yet one that still speaks today. The prophet Ezekiel had a vision of a valley full of bones receiving life, breath, sinew, and flesh after encountering the word of God. When they arose, they received the spirit and they danced. As Easter people, we celebrate the spirit that continues to give life and breath and flesh to our dry bones. We dare to dance in the face of fear, in the face of cynicism, and in the face of despair. We dare to dance as long as we live, for we, like the early Christians, are the recipients of the Spirit of God. May we dare to dance with dreamers. May we dare to dance their stories. May we dare to dance with freedom our whole life long. The day of Pentecost has arrived and calls us to dance to dance in the wind and the fire of the Spirit, to feel, to allow exuberance to fill our bodies and our souls. With those in Jerusalem on that day, may we dare to dream, to imagine, to let our breath be taken away, and to dance. This is the call. The flames of the Spirit are beckoning. We lift up our heads to meet the day. Our focus is on the future and what we might do together. We fortify our hearts with compassion and action, for we are called to dance. Holy One, 
justice seeker, lover of creation, praise to you for your indwelling spirit that moves within our lives. Come and dance with us, engage with us as we seek you so that we can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. Hi, I'm Katie, and I'm a lifelong member of First Presbyterian Church, and I'm glad you're joining us today. We are about to hear a vision from the prophet Ezekiel. This vision dates to sometime shortly after 587 BC, when the armies of Babylon razed Jerusalem and its temple and deported the Judean king and many Judean residents to Babylon. The future seemed a black hole into which the people were destined to disappear. The exile was more than just a, a crisis of physical suffering and communal identity. It was also a crisis of faith. The key symbols of Judean faith, Jerusalem, its temple, its people, and the Davide monarchy had been destroyed, and the people wondered if the Lord was truly Lord and truly faithful. Listen now for the word of God for us today from Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophecy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were no sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophecy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. O oh, word of God that is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Last year, we were in a very different place. A mere two months earlier, we had emerged from a year of not meeting in person. We were still not sure what the future was going to look like. So much of our church programming shut down during COVID and it still had not resumed. We lived holding our breath, glad to be gathering in person again and yet watching the numbers daily and wondering if they rose, if we would have to go back to just purely virtual interactions again. We were in that liminal space between God asking Ezekiel, can these bones live? And the Spirit of God filling them with the breath of life. To be honest, we spent a lot of months in that liminal space. Not only did we not recognize it, 
we kept thinking that the space was not holy. We kept thinking that, that it was dead time. We spent months saying, when we're past COVID or on the other side of COVID, just kind of living in limbo. Well, let me remind you of the context of Ezekiel's vision and of people who knew what it was to live in limbo. Jerusalem was destroyed. The majority of the population of Jerusalem had been made to march almost 700 miles to Babylon, and they were a defeated people. Their God did not save them. The seed of God's power on earth was destroyed. They were destroyed. They were cut off from the very source of their identity, the temple. They were very much like that valley of dry bones that God showed Ezekiel. They had no hope at all. They had gone off to Babylon. They thought they'd been abandoned by their God. What hope is there when your own God is not there on your side? And yet there was always this promise that one day, one day, God would restore them. So I wonder how many of them spent those first few months, few years, few decades of their exile just waiting, hanging on to that sliver of hope that, you know, when we're past this exile, on the other side of exile, God is going to restore us. And so they didn't really settle into life in Babylon. They just went through the motions of living without really living. Well, like them, we got caught in the trap of thinking we were in a holding pattern until we got past COVID. But after a while, we realized that, well, we can spend the rest of eternity waiting for uh, the other side of COVID, and then we'd be waiting for to get on the other side of whatever challenge comes after that, and then the other side of whatever challenge comes after that. As long as we were alive, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be things that derail our plans and our hopes. As long, though, as we are constantly waiting till we get on the other side, we aren't really living. And we worship a God of the living. That's what God showed Ezekiel. When God placed Ezekiel in that valley of dry, desiccated bones, God knew that even Ezekiel's hope was drying up. God knew the hope of God's people had withered. God knew they had settled for just trying to survive a new normal. And you know something? That's when God does God's best work. Because when hope dies... God opens graves and raises the dead. God told Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones, and, and the bones came together and they got flesh and sinew and skin until they were bodies. And then God said, prophesy to the breath, and the breath of God, the Spirit of God that gave life in those first moments of creation when everything was new, filled the bodies, and they lived. And God said, I am going to open your graves. I'm going to bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know I am the Lord. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. It's important, though, to remember that you know, God fulfilled that promise to the people of Jerusalem, God restored them to the land. But the land they turned to was not the same as the one they left. They had to rebuild. They had to discover who they were without a temple. They had to discover what it meant to be <clears throat> the people of God who returned from the dead. You see, God is in the business of resurrection. God is in the business of hope when hope has died.
And God is in the business of new possibilities. God doesn't long for the past. God's message to us is never, let me take you back to where you were and how things were before. God is always looking to the future with hope and with newness and with imagination and with creativity. Well, today we celebrate the gift of God's Spirit to the church. The same Spirit that was there in those first days, breathing life into creation, the same Spirit that filled those first disciples when they were hiding in an upper room, afraid to go outside. That same Spirit has been blowing through us. We didn't even know it. So today we are going to celebrate where the Spirit has been bringing new life to our church. The Spirit, you see, has been blowing all through COVID. Although we were so busy trying to figure out what to do next and waiting to get past COVID and hoping to get back to the old normal, that I don't think we recognized what God was doing among us for quite a long time. We didn't recognize the flame that was being fanned right before our eyes. So I want to take this moment to tell you what God has been doing, what the Spirit has been doing in our church, not on the other side of COVID, but that began during. You know, we've been talking a lot about our online ministry. Of course, everybody watching this is part of our online ministry. At first, it started out of necessity. How do we worship? How do we keep some semblance of community when we can't gather together in person? So we started our, our Zoom communion services and recording weekly worship to put out on the web. And we had a, a short prayer service on Wednesday evenings. Now, you need to know the nature of online ministry is that you really have no clue how far the reach goes. There's no way to really know how many people are actually worshiping with us online, whether it's on Sunday mornings at 10 or whether they are, are coming to our website later and worshiping. It's just an educated guess. And, you know, do you count the people who were there in the first 30 seconds of your video or do you wait and see how many are still there halfway through? It's, we do our best. It's a guess. And we don't know who is watching unless they tell us. Well, some of you joined us for our Wednesday night prayer services on Facebook. We stopped that, I think it was December of last year. There just simply weren't enough hours in the day to do everything we needed to be doing here. Well, I just found out last week that someone completely unconnected to our church or anyone in our church stumbled across our prayer service on Facebook. I have no clue why the Facebook algorithms decided she needed to see that. But she saw it. And she tuned in. You need to know this person had stopped praying because of the loss of a child. But our online prayer service brought her back to prayer. We had no clue until last week when she shared that story. We're still in the early stages of exploring what our online ministry can be and how we can combine our imaginations and new technology to create new ways of connecting with God and others. We've already seen God used what we're doing to connect with former members who live overseas. We've already seen how it's allowed our members who, for whatever reason, aren't able to gather in person to still worship with us. I know many of you fall in that category. We've had Zoom classes that have had people from Minnesota and Malawi take part. The diverse voices that brought to those studies just added to the experience for all of us. Now, when we started doing this, it was out of sheer necessity. But now we see the Spirit of God has been breathing life into it and continues to do so. 
as we explore where this will take us and celebrate the lives that it touches and impacts. Let's talk about our outreach since COVID hit. It started out with us providing space for pretty much every AA group that had been meeting in person in Lincoln to still have a place to meet. And many, most of those, shut down when COVID hit. Because of our relationship with one of those AA groups, we were able to open up our church and keep a place open for AA groups to meet for an additional four months. And we had hundreds of people flowing through our building every week. And that was a huge ministry because COVID was a huge risk to alcoholics. As stress rises, the risk of falling off the wagon increases and the risk of domestic violence increases. So we were able to provide support for about four months after everyone else shut down thanks to our long-term relationship with the AA groups in our church. This year we're taking part in the Pride Festival. Many of those who've come to our church in the last couple years have mentioned that they've been specifically looking for a church that would be welcoming of all people. Well, we've been that church, but we've been pretty low-key about letting people know that. It was something of a wake-up call when we started hearing that from one person after another. And by the way, they also mentioned that it was actually kind of hard to figure that out about us by looking at our website. So we've made some changes there, some temporary, some permanent. Uh, But we also realized from that we needed to be a whole lot more vocal and not shy in telling people that, yes, we're a church where everyone's welcome. We don't care what letter goes with your identity. You're welcome here. Because people are looking for a church like ours, but how are they going to know we're that church if we don't tell them? So we want to let those who've been hurt by the church, those who've been rejected by the church, those who didn't think the church was a safe place to even ask questions, we want to let them know This church is for them too. There's a place for them here. The Spirit empowers us to share the good news. And this is one thing that it looks like. We're also exploring other ways to connect with our neighborhood. We have a member who takes their therapy dog to the lighthouse periodically. And the kids just light up when that dog walks into that room. I don't think they care about the adult attached to the dog. They love that dog. We have people who volunteer there and who volunteer at Clinic with a Heart and the Gathering Place and and other places in town that maybe our church doesn't have a a direct link with, but, but they're there because of their faith. We've learned that our community is, our neighborhood is maybe primarily these few blocks around our church, but it really is also the whole city of Lincoln as well. So We have a mission committee that's exploring what that means. How do we connect with more? How do we reach out to the university and our wider Lincoln community? We're in the heart of Lincoln. How can we become a beacon of hope and possibility? There's exciting conversations happening. You, of course, all know our music program has been heavily impacted by the pandemic. With us having to put a pause on our choir and our Arts for the Soul concert series, We did have a few just online concerts during COVID, but for the most part, a lot of that just kind of went on on the pause button. It's been great having the choir back, and I'm excited about the concert coming up this Friday. It's an outdoor concert in the parking lot. It's free for the whole community, and yeah, this is the one with the free ice cream. So, but I'm excited that we are finding new ways to use our music to reach out, because so often, in churches, music stays inside the four walls of the building, or maybe it travels to the four walls of a nursing home or something like that. We're taking it out into the streets and inviting our our neighbors to join us. The Spirit is blowing. Time will tell what comes of it. You might have noticed we've had a greater variety of people helping lead worship since COVID. 
Well, that's something new since the pandemic. And with our online worship, even those of you who don't live here can take part and read a scripture or be a part of our online worship service and leading that. It's exciting. We even have committee members and ministry team members who don't live in town or don't even live in Nebraska. In a way, this pandemic has actually been very good for us. It's caused us to re-examine what we're doing and what community looks like, what it means. And it's given us the freedom to explore and try new things. God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? We can give a resounding yes, they can. Because the Spirit of God has been blowing through our church and bringing new ideas and new ministries to life. We are in such a different place than we were last year. You know, last year we were wondering, when are things going to get back to normal? Well, now we know there is no such thing as normal. God is constantly doing something new and inviting us to take advantage of each unique moment. And here's the thing. The Spirit isn't stopping. This is just the beginning. And who knows where the Spirit will blow us tomorrow. On this day when we celebrate the filling of the church with the Holy Spirit. Let's celebrate what the Spirit is doing among us right now. And let's get excited about where it will take us tomorrow. God of fire and wind, breath and flame, your breath alone brings life to dry bones and weary souls. Fill us with the breath of your Spirit and with your flame ignite within us a fiery passion for your mission in the world today. As your breath blows through us, may we feel your power fill us, urging us to do your greater good. Awaken us to new possibilities to share your love in the world. Amen. The bread and cup of communion are God's gift to us, the invitation to share in Christ's life. 
It also is also God's call to participate in the mission, God's mission in the world, offering us the strength and the courage we need to dance the dance of justice and to find the steps of service. Just as God has given us what we need to do that, let us be generous in giving what we can to the work of the church so that we may engage in serving others, in working for justice, and in supporting the work of God's church in this place, that we might be a sign of hope to others. May God bless and expand our generosity, not just in money, but in time, in energy and imagination as well, until all needs are met. Given whatever way works best for you, you could give by text, you could give online, you could, of course, mail a check-in. Whatever works for you, however much or however little you give, it all matters. And we simply can't do what we do without your gifts. So thank you. Thank you for what you've done, and thank you for what is moving in your heart to do. The greatest gift given was, of course, Jesus Christ, who lived, died, and lives again. Because of that gift, we have nothing to fear, and all things are possible. As we come to the communion table, we come as ones who did nothing to deserve a seat at this table. We simply come as ones invited to enjoy the feast and to be filled. This is Christ's table, and he is the host. Christ welcomed all who come, and so do we. We begin with the great prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer that has its roots back in the 4th century A.D., and it links us to Christians across time, for a version of this prayer has been said ever since. The prayer tells the story of our relationship with God and the grace that is ours. As we pray... Let us remember those who have been denied the sacrament, those who are unable to partake, those who in any way have felt excluded by the church from this table or from the fellowship. Let us remember those whose lives are being upturned with tragedy and war and trauma. Let us remember those who are seeking meaning and who need the Spirit's presence in their life. They are present, seen and unseen. I invite you to read the congregation parts when they appear on the screen. Friends, may the God of wind and flame be with you. And also with you. Throw open the shutters of your hearts so God may enter. We offer our hearts so God's joy might dance over our lives. Take take deep breaths and sing your praises to God. We join all people and languages in praising the one who feeds us this day. You whispered in the silence and the spirit tumbled forth, moving over water, booing waves, rattling treetops on tall mountains. You shaped us from creation's dusty floor and spirit breathed life into us so that we might follow you but we sought sin's self-absorption, vision, and like it better. Prophets spoke of your dreams for us, but we preferred to shudder ourselves in the shadowed rooms of temptation. So with the spirit breathing hope, you sent your beloved child to us so we might once again have hope. With those who dance with joy on this day, with those who long for the fresh breath of grace, we sing out songs of praise to you. Holy are you, God of wind and flame. All creation dances in the Spirit's arms this day. Blessed is the one who is anointed by the Spirit. Hosanna in the highest. In the soft, warm breath of a baby, you come to be one of us in every way. In the gentle invitation to followers, you whisper that all are welcome. In the sobs at the tomb of Lazarus, you echo our grief and loss. In the anguished cry on the cross, you join us on the last journey. In the new life breathed by the Spirit, you show us death has no power, 
love endures forever. As we gather to celebrate this day, as we remember the gifts Jesus shared, we sing of the mystery of faith. Christ died, his last breath stolen from him. Christ was raised, the Spirit's breath bringing new life. Christ will come, breathing new grace and hope in our lives. Here, where the bread and cup wait, breathe your spirit upon these gifts. Here, where the young long for visions and the old whisper their memories, breathe your spirit upon us. Let us not be content simply to eat the bread, but be strengthened by it, to blow through the fears among us, knocking them off their feet. Let us not just sip from grace's cup, but be inflamed by its passion for justice, to breathe new life into all who have lost that last bit of hope. And when our journey has ended and we are invited to be with those of every time and place, breathe on us, very breath of God, so that we may take in great gasps of grace to forever praise your name. Amen. Friends, on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, this bread is my body, broken for you. Take and eat, all of you. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, this cup is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink all of you. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us eat and drink together. Please join me in the prayer of sending. God's breath of hope has torn open the shutters of our hearts. May we open them to all who long for grace and life. Justice is the strong wind poured into us by the one who is brother to the forgotten. We will go into the streets of our neighborhoods to serve our siblings. A new community is being shaped by the Holy Spirit made up of those from every place and every tongue. We will join hearts with those we meet and learn songs of joy in new languages. Friends, as the poet Rainer Maria Rilke said, that designing spirit, the mastermind of all things on earth, loves nothing so much in the sweeping movement of the dance as the turning point. The day of Pentecost is the turning point for the church, both then and now. The Spirit lives in us and calls us to boldness and brilliance, to be filled with hope and love and joy, and to dance with the rhythm of that Spirit. May it be so in us, and may it be so in all the church. And may the loving God, the risen Christ, and the dancing Spirit fill you with all you need for the days ahead. Amen.
Today is Pentecost Sunday, the day we celebrate the birthday of the church. The day those first disciples were gathered in a room out of fear, afraid to go out when they heard this sound like an amazing wind filling the room. And then what happens next? Something that we have a hard time believing. Tongues of flame were on each one of them and they were not burned. Fire is an amazing thing. It's destructive. It can burn things. But it also brings power and life. Hang on just a sec. Can't let it burn for too long. Fire brings power and life to our world. It is what powers our furnaces, it powers our hot water heaters, it helps us be comfortable in the winter, but it also ignites our passion, our, our passion for going out and making a difference in this world and changing people's lives. And that's what that first Pentecost was. Those disciples were set on fire with the Spirit and then they went out into the streets. They overcame their fear and they went out into the streets and they started telling people who were afraid and people who were worried about their future and peer, people who didn't know if, if they had enough to get by, they started telling them of this God who loved them, this God who came down out of heaven to walk this earth with them, and this God who defeated death and fear. It's an amazing story, and we are the inheritors of that story. We are now the ones who have inherited that flame, and we get to go out and share the good news with others of a God who loves them. Now I know that some of you know that I eat fire, or at least used to. I don't do it anymore, partially because it's been so many years since I've done it. I just, it takes courage and I just don't feel like going through that again. But I do play with it, put on my fingers, I burn things with it. I have to admit, I like campfires. Blowing it out's a bit of a challenge. <laughs> See, two tries. Not bad, actually, for not doing this for a few years. I actually learned how to eat fire in seminary. One of my seminary professors was a retired clown from a circus. And so she taught all of us who wanted how to eat fire. She did make us promise, though, never to reveal the secret. And so I'm sorry, I cannot tell you how I do this. I will just tell you it is fun. I used to be able to hold the flame for a little longer than I can right now. You see, I used to play the guitar a lot. I had these wonderful calluses on my fingers and I could probably hold that flame for about five seconds. It's a little hotter, a little quicker right now. And you might be interested in knowing that when I blew out this torch, it was quite a flame, wasn't it? I actually was blowing the flame off of the fuel. That's how you blow it out. You don't just blow out a flame, you blow it away from the fuel. And so that's what I was doing. I can't tell you that much there. But anyway, it's a load of fun. As I say, I promised my wife I want to eat fire anymore, but that's a really cool thing to see. I used to be able to breathe fire just a little bit, not like the pros. But um, anyway, a lot of fun. I think I could still put it on my tongue. Let me give that one a shot. Let me get my other fire stick here. Hang on just a sec. Let's see if I still have enough guts to do this one. I don't know if that showed up or not on, on, uh, on the video, but let's do it over here. Kind of cool, isn't it? One time, not bad. Anyway, happy Pentecost. I hope you have an awesome day today. But don't forget, you two are filled with fire. You are filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. So let it help you get over your fear of being out there and being involved where God is. Let it empower you to draw on all the power and energy and courage of the Spirit to go out there and share the good news with people who need to know that we worship a God who brings life out of death and life out of the flames. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks for joining us at First Presbyterian Church.
where faith is nurtured, curiosity encouraged, diversity welcomed, and all are loved. Find out more about us at fpclincoln.org or find us on Facebook.